Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Before we start, here's a plug for The Anatomy Gal, a channel made by my friend and colleague Natalie Wade. She's got excellent tutorials and explanations for lab materials in anatomy and physiology, even with cadavers, so it's really cool. Be sure to check out her channel and subscribe. A link is in the description below. In this video, we're going to cover a part of the adaptive immune system, which involves antigen presentation. I highly recommend if you haven't done so and you don't really have a grasp of what antigens are that you go and watch the video uh, probably previous to this in the playlist. I'll put a link to it where I discuss more detail about antigens. But it suffices to say for now that if we have an invading pathogen, something that could cause disease, something perceived as foreign by our body, such as this bacterium, Staphylococcus aureus, that we would want to mount an immune response. And we first need to get an antigen from Staphylococcus aureus and present it to the appropriate cell type. I'll give you an analogy for antigen presentation. So it's like being on the FBI's most wanted list. Okay? Being on the most wanted list, it doesn't do any good to not have the person's name or picture. You need to know some information about the person on the most wanted list so people know what to look out for. So the main two things that you, of course, put on the most wanted list is the, the perpetrator's name. You put their picture so people know who to watch out for. And so if somebody spots the person, they will contact the authorities and they'll get the guy. Okay? That's how antigen presentation works. If you have an invading pathogen such as Staphylococcus aureus, you need a picture of the guy, right? And the picture is kind of like the antigen. The antigen has that bacterium or that pathogen's information in it. So we need to get that antigen. The way that works is initially through phagocytosis. And there's multiple different cell types that can do this. Um, three examples would actually be B cells, a macrophage right here, and then also dendritic cells. Okay, these are cells that can cause phagocytosis of the pathogen. Remember what that means is these cells basically eat the pathogen. They eat it, they digest it, they break it down, and then ultimately they take a piece from this, and that's the antigen. So after they induce phagocytosis, they then display this antigen from the Staphylococcus aureus on their plasma membrane, and just so you're aware, it's through a protein called an MHC protein. We'll have a separate video where we go into that in a lot more detail. But for now, they display this foreign antigen from that specific pathogen on their plasma membrane. And so when this macrophage is just floating around, if it comes in contact with a cell that can mount an immune response, this antigen on the surface will tell that cell that, hey, we need to mount an immune response specifically against this pathogen, okay? This antigen didn't come from a virus, even though a virus is bad, so it would not induce an immune response against a virus. It, this antigen did not come from your own cells, so it wouldn't mount an immune response against your own cells. It's specific to this pathogen. So, right down here is a naive lymphocyte. In the context of the immune system, naive means the white blood cell or whatever it is has not yet been sensitized to that specific pathogen. So this naive lymphocyte is just minding its own business. It's just there, ready to take action, but it does not yet have the information on this most wanted list guy. It doesn't have information on it yet. But you can see here that on the membrane, the plasma membrane of this naive lymphocyte, it has a receptor. And this receptor is going to be able to interact with this antigen from the antigen presenting cell. So the reason why this is called an antigen presenting cell is that it's going to present this antigen to a naive lymphocyte and cause this naive lymphocyte to differentiate into an activated lymphocyte. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Let's look at the next slide. And so now this macrophage, or whichever antigen presenting cell we have, it now has activated this lymphocyte through this interaction between the lymphocyte's receptor and the foreign antigen from our pathogen that is displayed on the antigen-presenting cell. So hopefully this makes sense. We now have an activated lymphocyte. It is now sensitized to and activated against this specific antigen from Staphylococcus aureus. And depending on now which type of lymphocyte we have, 
it will then do whatever mechanism it does to fight the infection. In general, we're going to talk about three types of lymphocytes. We're going to talk about what are called helper T lymphocytes, or helper T cells. We'll talk about cytotoxic T lymphocytes, or cytotoxic T cells, and then plasma cells, which are a, an activated B cell, okay, or activated B lymphocyte. If we're talking about the helper T lymphocyte, or helper T cell, they're not going to directly attack the pathogen. They're just going to coordinate and initiate an immune response against the pathogen. If we're talking about a cytotoxic T cell, those are going to be the cells that directly attack the pathogen. These cytotoxic T cells will go and make contact with the pathogen and induce apoptosis, so the pathogen will die. And then if we're talking about the plasma cell, which is an activated B cell or B lymphocyte, the plasma cell will generate antibodies, which will then bind to these pathogens and it will facilitate their destruction via other methods. So there's multiple ways that we can destroy this pathogen. But in order to do that, we can't have naive lymphocytes because the naive lymphocytes, they're naive. They haven't seen the, the antigen yet. They have to be activated first before they know which antigen to even attack in the first place. Okay? But once they're sensitized, once they're activated, then they'll go and do whatever they need to against that pathogen. And this is the basis of really how the adaptive immune system works. We have antigen presentation and subsequent activation of lymphocytes. And that is B lymphocytes and then the two subpopulations of T lymphocytes. All right. um, in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to look at a, really a summary of the adaptive immune system in a little bit more detail. We'll see antigen presentation there, but there's a little bit of other details that we're going to talk about with the adaptive immune system. And really, if you understand what I just talked about in this video over antigen presentation, and the next video that we'll talk about for the, uh, the summary, which is pretty much everything, if you understand those two videos, you pretty much understand the adaptive immune system. For the most part, there's really not a whole lot more to it. We will have a separate video over MHC proteins, but other than that, this is the main stuff. So please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.